Hi, this is Denise from Four Square Market Farm, and uh, this is kind of the prelude. Maybe it could be considered the first part in the weave along. So, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so I realized that it's a week before the weave along, roughly, and hopefully, I'll get this video up when it's still actually a week before the weave along. And I thought it was important to briefly talk about how to choose your fiber. And the first step in that is making your warp and weft calculations. And so I know that I want to start spinning because I'm participating in the um, spin together this year. So I need to have my fiber prepped and ready to spin by next week. So that I figure this is a good opportunity for me to go ahead and talk about this first so I can move on to the fiber prep. Okay, so first of all, I had to decide how much yarn I needed in order to choose my fiber. And I'm kind of saying that because I'm assuming that that's how most people are going to do it. In my case, I have like whole fleeces of things because I weave a lot and I weave large pieces of fabric. So it's not quite so crucial to me, but... Um, if you have maybe roving stashes or maybe things in four to eight ounces, uh, you might you know, want to go into your stash and try to figure out what exactly you're going to use. And you want to know how much of it you're going to need. Because if you've got this supply of Merino, you've only got four ounces, uh, you're probably not going to have enough. So uh, the best thing to do is to calculate your warp and weft. Okay, so here's how I do it. Now, normally... Uh, I kind of outlined it in the Instagram post I had. I used a weaving worksheet, and this one is Peggy Osterkamp, and I spelled her name wrong uh, on the post. So I have to go back and fix that, so that way you can see that. And it's a really nice sheet I print out. But the other day when I did my actual calculations, I could not find my spinning journal. I thought the thing was still packed, but no, it was like underneath something. So um, it, basically they all work out about the same. So I'm going to walk you through my calculations. Also, you can go online and there are several places where there is a warp and weft calculator and it'll do the math for you. So I did it three times. I did it twice on two different websites and once by hand. And I came out with two different calculations. And so that just kind of lets you know even when you're putting the same parameters, sometimes calculations are slightly a little different. So I went and found my learning the weave book. Okay, a quick funny sidebar. Um, we were discussing the learning the weave book in one of the four chef groups, and someone said, uh, "You can't use that book. It's so terribly outdated." And get something newer. And I guess my thing was. Weaving's been around for millennium, and weaving has been passed from generations to generations to different people. And there are people who learned how to weave the way their uh, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, whatever, previous generations before them learned how to weave. So not much has really changed. So how could a book maybe written in the 70s or 80s or 90s, be really outdated. Uh, as long as it has the basics of weaving, it's not, you can't really get an outdated older book like that. That's, that just seemed kind of silly to me. So I, I thought I'd say that. A weaving calculation is a weaving calculation. You know, it doesn't matter if your book is from the 50s or your book is from 2019. It's a weaving calculation. You can learn something from those books. Okay, anyway. So I used the calculations for figuring warp and figuring weft on pages 106 and 107. And basically, they look a lot like uh, the Peggy Oyster Camp sheet, uh, except that uh, this one, I mean, it, it adds little sections down here for the warp yarns you're going to use. There are sections here for, oh, this one's like microscopic, print it this way you can, so you can see it. Sections that tell you how many yards per pound, 
the do your totals and ounces and balls and skeins. So this is like super detailed. And I really like this one. I have ones already filled out. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay, so at any rate, here are my calculations. And I played that little fast and loose because I already know I'm going to spend more yarn than I really need. Okay, so the length of my piece is going to be about 100 yards. And that is fairly standard for scarves I like to make. I make I like to make them to wrap around and drape. Or that they'll go over my head and still wrap around in these really cold Ohio winters. Okay, I put fringe 12 inches. And I like fringe. It's going to be on there. You know, if I decide to make something other than a scarf, I'll just cut it off and use it to make pom-poms. So 12 inches is pretty good for me. Uh, take up, pretty average, 10%. And because I know the fiber I'm using, and I've used this fiber a lot, I have a pretty good idea that the take up will be fine. When I spin Jacob, oh, Jacob, the take up on Jacob is a lot. And so this time around, when I spun the Jacob fin, I'm going to add more than 10% for my take up and shrinkage. But in this case, the fin by itself, and the way I'm going to do it, 10% is standard is fine. Then you get loom waste. Okay, this is a calculation you have to know. Okay, um, for I'm going to use the Ashford sample it loom, and I'll show you that in the next segment. And I know very well that tying a loom a certain way from uh, as far as I can bring that bar up against the heddle in both directions is not much, much more than six inches. It's actually a little less than that. So I can get 12 inches of loom waist. And if I really want to um, be a weirdo and bring the heddle completely further back from where it's supposed to rest. I can get a little less than that. Okay, so 12 inches is fine for me. But if I was using the four shaft loom, we're talking about 14 inches on each end. Okay, so for the for the sample it, that's 12 inches total, both ends. For the um for the four shaft, the Harris fill, um, it's 14 inches, 14 to 16 inches easily on both ends. So you really have to know your calculations for loom waste. Okay, so I put that in there, and then that gives me my finished width, um, the heddle, you know, the distance um, across, what it's going to be. It's a 8-inch loom, but it's really going to be 6 inches. Okay, the draw in, 2 inches. The shrinkage, and um, how many ends. Okay, so the heddle I'm using, I only have one for that. I never did get the 12. At some point, I'm going to get the 12. But for the most part, I tend to just weave worsted weight when I'm using the sample it, or double if I need to. So there are 60 ends per, or 60 ends that fit into the head. It's a 7.5, uh, 8 ends per inch roughly. And so I'm going to spin a thinner yarn and double it. So I'm going to want 120 ends Um Oh, wait, for, sorry, I got my total length. It was all that add together. And then warp ends 120. So that gives me my yardage for the warp. And then on the weft, calculating one weft shot, and I told you 7.5, so it's like 8 inches. And then uh, how many picks per inch? 10, roughly. And then the shrinkage. Got to put that shrinkage in there. And then go ahead and calculate that. And it's about 244. So I'm looking at 724 yards total for the project. Okay, now here's where it gets tricky. Because this tells me how many yards. I need to know how much fiber I need. So uh, in this book, this is my spinning journal book, if you haven't seen this yet. And basically what I do is I spin... And I put my samples, and these are in particular a breed fiber samples, so there's very specific breed fibers. And the samples in here, and I usually spin an ounce, or I tell it in here exactly how much I've spun, how much yardage I got out of it. And so, for the most part, I know exactly how much yardage I'm going to get 
out of for a particular amount of ounces for a particular fiber. So in this case, I'm spinning fin and I'm actually spinning the exact same fin that is in this book. Okay, it's from the same source. I just had a lot of it and it's been pretty much stored for years. And so I know that if I spin one ounce of fin I, at a certain weight, I know exactly how many yards I'm going to get. So that helps. That's where sampling comes in. That really helps. Now, if you don't know that or you don't have time to sample between now and when we start, here's a way to guesstimate it. Okay, first of all, decide what weight of yarn you want to use. And that might depend on your read. Um, or it may not, like I said, I have the eight uh, dents per inch read. And so instead of using the worsted weight I would use with it, I'm going to use a sport and double it. So you got to kind of think about it like that. If you have a, a 10 dent read or whatever like that, you might want to put something between that and worst it and double it or depending on how you really want that, um, you know, with the quality you want from the scarf. If you want something light and drapey, it, all that is kind of, you know, take that into account. But let's just say, for example, that you've got a standard tendon read and you want to use a worsted weight or a sport weight. Well, then you can calculate it guessing a sport weight might be 1300 to 1800 yards per pound and if you look up these yards per pound i'm gonna tell you right now this stuff differs depending on where you're looking at it that's why the ranges are so big okay so maybe for dk you want a thousand to 1400 yards per pound right so let's say that you're spinning um 100 yards per ounce and i, I think at, at my tolerance I did a little better at Merino. It was like 166 yards and then an ounce of fiber, which was kind of scary. Um, but let's say for average that I spend between 90 and 100 yards per ounce, then I know what my yards per pound is. And for that particular weight of yarn, for that particular fiber. And so I can say that um, for every four ounces, I'm going to get 325 yards, 325, 375, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and divide that 325 by my total. Okay. Or, and that will tell me, uh, what is that? Two, six, 50. So two, two and a half, just to say two and a half, right? So I need two and a half times, so eight and a half ounces. Okay, so this is just like kind of a little rough calculation. Uh, you don't have to be super accurate, but go over, don't go under, of course, because it's not really something you want to do. You don't want to stop in the middle of a project and have to spend more to weave, which I've done because I didn't calculate. I just started weaving. So I'm going to say about eight to 10 ounces is what I'm going to need. And you know what? Chances are for me, I'm just going to go ahead and spin a pound because I can always use that fiber somewhere else. And so I went down into my collection, like I said, and I'm saying, uh, I guess I need about a pound of fiber. And so there are some things that were kind of off the list because I needed a pound of fiber. Um, you know, the Gulf Coast Native was kind of off the list because I didn't really have a pound of that anymore because I spun it up. And the um, bond was off the list, basically. I had spun that one up too. And so there were some things that were kind of off the list because I didn't have a pound of fiber. And then there were some things that were off the list because I wanted this to be softer, um, just in case I do use it as a scarf. So no Cheviot or Suffolk in this case, because I wanted it just a little bit softer. Okay, that just gives you like a rough idea of uh, my calculating and selecting of the fibers for the yarn. So let me show you the fiber. I took a Instagram post picture of it the other day. And here it is now. Sorry about all that crunchy noise. 
This is a sample, and there should be two of those, but I haven't figured out what the other one is yet. This is a sample of Gray Finn from Hopkins Fiber Studio. Lovely stuff. Of course, it's Finn. Like, how could you possibly go wrong? And this is some washed Finn. I bought on eBay. No, no, actually on Etsy. And uh, 2014. And I bought it to blend with the Angora because uh, Finn just blends wonderfully with Angora. And I talk about that in my Fab Fiber um, video I did on Finn. And this is really nice Finn. So I'm going to go ahead and begin carding this friend thin and prepping it for a worsted spin for warp. Now, um, here's what I haven't decided. Normally, I spin all my fibers now for weaving because I do more weaving than I do anything else. And for the knitting that I do, I prefer smooth yarn and for knitting and crocheting. So I don't spin a lot of... Um, Woolen. Actually, I don't spin woolen yarns at all. Like, I'm not a big fan of them anyway. And that's a whole different story. So, I'm going to prep this just like I would any other worsted. And I'll show you a little bit of that as well. What I haven't decided is what I'm going to do about the weft yarn. And I'm really thinking I might make some spiral plies or some beehives. Um, you know, or some thick and thin. If I do that, then it will stay a scarf because... Thick and thin and beehives really aren't um, not really appropriate for any type of um, hat making or bags I would make. I don't they wouldn't really handle the wear. So I'll I have a look at that. My last uh, thin project was something very nice. So we'll see. Okay, well thank you very much. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully you'll be ready to. Spin along in a few weeks. Until then, have a great day.